Alright guys, today we got Colton and Matt sparring. Starting off, Matt's got that grip with that right sleeve. And Colton is able to get a pseudo underhook and then a pseudo knee slice here. Right here, he should have pointed this knee towards him instead of pointing it away, pointing it towards him. And uh, tried to pull his shoulder closer to Matt's shoulder and then kick through. Finish the knee cut. And then right here, all he's got to do is take his right hand on top of the knee and then hip switch over that knee and he'd finish this pass. But Matt got him squared back up. Right here, when you have one foot trapped, if you take, if he took his left arm over Matt's left thigh, or over Matt's right thigh, so he took this arm over this leg, but not over the shin, over the, like, the actual thigh, but on that side, uh, then he could reach around and grab the foot that's tucked in between, and then he could hip switch over for a pass. He decided to back up. Matt's getting his spider grips again. Alright. So that... I'm not against pulling guard for ankle locks, but he didn't have this tucked all the way in his armpit, so when he fell, he didn't have the foot up here in the armpit, so he just, there's no ankle lock threat. So if you're going to pull for an ankle lock when someone's in guard, you got to fully wrap that ankle up high in your armpit, like you're going to guillotine the foot. Alright, so there's a couple things happening here. Uh, whether Colton did it or Matt did it, the arm has been beaten by the hips here because the hips are under the elbow. So you can do a lot of, there's a lot of control things you can do with that. So that's one thing you have to note is that that frame has to come back inside the hips. This frame has to come not where his hand is on the neck right now. He would need this point of the elbow pointed at the neck for this to be a strong frame. And now see he can't get it under because he tried jumping it out and Matt's doing a good job blocking it with his head. Now he's starting to get his frame. Alright, this is super good. I can't stress this enough. Matt has a fake underhook right here. And he does not jump to mount. He goes knee on belly. And then he gets under the arm and walks the elbow up with a little fingertip walk for a second. And then once the arm is real high, he doesn't move until that arm is above 90 degrees. All right, so see how the elbow is down and he hasn't moved yet. He drives the elbow up. Now there's a space for him to land in without going into half guard. So important. Now he's good to go to half. Or now he's good, good to go to mount. <laughs> Typical triangle arm bar. Mount stuff, pin the hand, throw the leg over. Armbar, arm crush, Kimura, Americana, wrist lock, that right, uh, the arm on his right side here. He's just flowing. He's probably going to fall to his back for the triangle. Colin's still got a messed up shoulder. Get a little early tap. Starts in turtle. Holding circles. Looking for a seat belt. So I might have mentioned this in one of the other commentaries, but I'm usually really against jip coming up real high like this if you actually want the back. It's not bad for arm bars, but uh, it's not good to try to take the back like that. And the reason that if he was coming for an arm bar right here on this arm of Matt's, you have to be elbow deep and your elbow needs to be connected to your chest. And right here he's reaching with this arm. That arm is reached all the way under rather than just wrapping elbow deep on this near side arm for that Kimura arm bar. Now he 
looks like he's got elbow inside for the frame and then a frame here. So it's a lot better than what was happening before. Now he, he's got to find these fingertips into this armpit so this has got to come over more. Right here it's his hand can viably get crushed. Matt's looking for the move of the day, using his gi to get a, using his opponent's gi for an Ezekiel. No pressure knee on belly. Looking for a little shotgun armbar here. Frank Mirlock. These guys are rolling light right now, but if they weren't, right here, Colton comes up with this underhook and like a weird like half guard takedown. And right here, we have this overhooked. I would immediately move my hips out to the left side and then take a left footed butterfly hook and start working this because I've already got this arm trapped. So all I gotta do is get my leg on the outside of his leg over here or tuck my leg all the way under me and just start bridging with it. So I either trap his foot with my foot over here and, and uh, butterfly flick him over, or I bring this foot under and uh, use it to help me drive off the ground. But I would immediately start shifting my hips looking for a sweep going that way. See how he he tilted him the, uh, the wrong direction here? He tilted him that way, and that's why he just stayed there, because he had that hand post on the mat right there because he didn't have control of that hand. He has control of this arm, so he should be butterfly sweeping this way. Colton almost unintentionally did what I do to free my arm. He came up with this wrist on this cross collar. If he would have put his hand right here on the trap and then bladed his elbow and forearm right here, you can frame on people really powerfully to, to pry your arm free from overhooks and underhooks. Good spider guard triangle. Let's see, he goes one spider hook and then stomps on it so his hand comes down. So he gets a spider hook. His hand is going to come down and he's going to stomp his foot down to the mat to break his po Colton's posture down and bring it closer to his hips. So boom, head came down and then he kicked over the top looking for this omoplata triangle position. He snatched the high diamond. And immediately, I would start pulling on this arm and shifting my hips under this elbow because it's obvious that Colton's about to start doing a stack pass here. And because he doesn't, see how his, his hips get caught up next to his hips? And now the angle on the high diamond is so terrible that he can just pull his head out. Again, I know Matt was going a little lighter right here. But, so right right here, I would shift my hips this way and start looking for the angle in this triangle arm bar, getting my head closer and my hips kind of farther out. And because that doesn't happen, the head goes real far away and the hips go in and then the stack pass happens. Yeah. So this is why we always have to be aware of what's happening around us. So this pass finishes then immediately, this isn't this isn't Matt doing this unless I'm mistaken on the video. Okay, it is him to look that up. Well, right here, the goal is to pin the hips and not jump into chest to chest. I need to push push his legs and hips away from me, turn him away, so I can get to side control. He gets a little too happy that the legs are passed for a moment, but he's still he's still in a butterfly hook here, so he tries to jump into chest to chest connection and what ends up happening is Matt lifts him, elevates him with his butterfly hook. Right there he's got a, butter, a reverse butterfly hook on a cross leg 
and lift, and now they're down into half guard. All because he jumped into chest to chest. We also can't pass with double overhooks or double on top. So like if you had one arm under, one arm over, you could start looking for passes like knee cuts and uh, half guard passes. But he has both arms over. So if I was Matt right now, I would take double underhooks and I would fling him into the air and do whatever I wanted. Yeah, see that double that double overhook ended up leading to Matt having half guard, almost basically half guard on one side with a really deep underhook. All because we didn't fight for the underhook in the first place. And now it led to a very slow back take. And there's the time. Yeah, so all this could have been avoided right here. If instead of letting go of the legs, he would have collapsed the knees together. So right here, the knees are collapsed. I would put my left arm on that knee and push down on it to keep their knees, his knees collapsed. And then I'd pull my left leg out so that I was free of this butterfly hook. So that whole next sequence was avoided. But right there, you let go of the knee, and he opened his legs up so that his butterfly hook was pointed towards the sky so he could elevate you. And then right there, he elevated, and now he's back in the guard game because we didn't pin his legs first. And now we're not fighting for overhooks, or underhooks, sorry. We're not fighting for underhooks. So the guy on bottom wins his underhook here in a couple seconds. Boom, he wins his underhook. And now he can go towards the back um, or go towards the sweep. And because pulling the sides to not let him sweep him, he gets back taken. Well guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you like the this singular style commentary more, where it's just one match, or if you like the big uh, sparring sessions that are like 30 minutes long. Thanks guys, see you next time.